hello, hello, and welcome to the Good Night Cafe. I'm your host, Fumi, and it's really great to be with you tonight. I, if you know, if you've been keeping up with my podcast, I am very bad at posting consistently, but we are getting there. I am making changes so that I can post more consistently. Here are the changes. One is these are going to be short form podcasts. They're going to be about 10 minutes. Two, every podcast episode will have a question, a theme, so that I can stay on topic and the content will be better for you to understand. Three is that visuals on YouTube are going to go away so that I don't have to worry about recording, transferring onto my laptop and editing. It's just a lot of work. Um, Alongside all, like, I do a lot of art outside of this podcast and I do a lot of, like, animation and I'm trying to get my webtoon, so I'm a busy gal. And making these I still want to keep making these podcasts but I want it to be really doable and consistent um and life is changing so rapidly around me and I grow we are growing every day guys if you know this podcast you know that we are all for growth and change so it's really hard to keep up with my changing opinions on everything like a lot of time has passed between now and the previous episode um and man do my opinions change uh within within that time so I'm trying to catch up with myself and with life all at the same time it's a mess anyways let's just get right started if you listen to the podcast before you'll know that I talked a lot about my dating life and how I have been kind of a serial dater it was because I have this I used to have this kind of addiction to love I might even still have that because I'm a complete I'm a hopeless romantic is what I am but I am that way because I really liked the whole high that you got from falling in love. It was a great distraction for my early life. It wasn't for validation. Let me get that cleared out. It wasn't for validation, not external validation. It was much more just the high of falling in love with another person, which doesn't mean that I didn't really fall in love with the person. It's just that I was very susceptible to getting infatuated and really emotionally attached to a person which is can be extremely harmful if you're not doing it in the right way um but anyways i'm giving you some advice today from a serial dater um and mind you a lot of these opinions are going to come from a christian perspective i'm a big believer in christian dating and and christ-centered dating so you know if you're not christian i still encourage you to listen just so you get like i think it's so interesting to get like other religions like perspective on dating and just to see if you can take anything away so don't run away you know stick with us okay like come on let's chill (laughs) but anyways um my first piece of advice from a serial dater is to not be a serial dater like hey like I think the problem with, or the reason why I was a serial dater is, like, I didn't know the line to dating. Like, like when do you, I was always just trying to get to know that person, and, but does it, just because I'm attracted to that person, and just because I want to get to know them better, does that mean that we have to be exclusive? I don't really think so, but, um, I didn't really know that line, so I ended up saying yes to a lot of guys when really I just wanted to get to know them, I like, but, um, big mistake on my part. Um, which also kind of feeds into this idea of, like, you should not ever say yes to dating someone if you want, if you're planning on changing them, or if your mission in in dating them is to change them. If you see that person and you're like, yes, we should date, but I think I could change that about him. Like, like making those exceptions and, and telling yourself, I could, like, like, they're really great, except if I could change this, that would be great, and I think I can change it, so let's go. Um, don't do that. Just, just don't do that. You have to be prepared as a person, especially when you're dating, um, guys within the age of 17 to, like, 21. Like, honestly, I really don't think you should date any guy from an, from the age of 17 to 21, because, um, if you're, like, if you're, a fixer-upper like I am. I am a mad fixer-upper and that is just not good. So I really had to hold myself back. But if you are a fixer-upper like I am, guys from the age 17 to probably 21 and probably 22 and maybe they start fixing themselves at 23. 
but from that age range, they are figuring themselves out. Guy and and we all know, and it's always been said that girls, girls grow up a bit quicker than guys. It is so true. And if you get stressed out by your partner not being where you're at, and you're a girl and you're ambitious, like dating guys from the age of 17 to 21 will only hold you back because they are and and there are exceptions there will always be exceptions and those exceptions are amazing but for the most part in my experience you don't date a guy when he's in that transition period because you know, like, this is the age when they're deciding on their future, and they're changing what they want for their future, like, I still can't believe that they even let 17-year-olds or 18-year-olds decide on what they want for their entire rest, like, the career that they want for the entire rest of their life, like, they've barely gotten through the first decade of their life, and they're choosing a college and a huge financial commitment to a college, uh, and a major and career and whatever, you know, to set the, the, the path for the rest of their life. I'm like, and then, and then people feel so committed because they're financially attached to whatever career they've chosen when they were 17. Like that's crazy. But anyways, um, sorry, don't even get me started on modern education and expectations because I am so against that. But, um, in any case, don't date a guy to change him probably avoid dating a guy from the ages 17 to 21 because hey they got a lot to figure out and so do you like like that that goes into the whole thing of like dating like you should still even when you're dating someone and if you do decide to date a guy within the ages 17 to 21 most likely or any time in your life you should come into the relationship knowing that you are both individuals two individuals that are growing together right like you there is no reason you need to stop growing as an individual when you're in a relationship like so many people try and become like a single unit with whoever they're at and that's you know that concept is amazing especially when it comes to marriage Um, but that does not mean you stop growing as an individual because if both of you guys stop growing as an, as individuals, how are you supposed to move forward as a unit, right? Like there's no end game to that. It's just y'all are standing still and have nowhere to go. Um, so yeah, it's totally possible too. So that's, that's where you need to set up your relationship where you have time for yourself to grow and and time that you invest in yourself um you know not spending 24 hours 24 24 7 with each other like that doesn't that doesn't need to happen like have time dedicated to yourself and have things that you love to do on your own and make sure that that other person knows that they are more than welcome to also have hobbies that they can have to themselves time with their guys or time with their girls you know like y'all need to have a little you know some separation which can be scary but you cannot hold the weight of another person's you know entire emotional um baggage and entire future like you have to both be taking your guys' future and moving forward as individuals and growing so that you guys can be the best for each other um and you know, the Christian part of it is, like, you should probably, like, if you should probably look for someone, not probably, I'm sorry, I keep on speaking in generalizations as if it's not fact, but you need to look for someone who values Jesus above all else, like, like, Jesus is number one in their life, and even saying that right now I'm telling myself like wow it is so rare like it is so rare to find a guy who has Christ truly at the center of their lives like I have met so many guys who say they're Christian but do they really think about their faith do they really put 
Christ at the at the forefront of their mind. Do they does Christ come first, right? That is for me in my heart. It's just like where is where are those guys? Um but yeah, like you need to there's no way don't lower your standards. Like don't make exceptions. If you truly want a healthy relationship where they make you better and you make them better, you need to have Christ at the center of your life and they need to have Christ at the center of their life. And there's no other way to put it. Um, And really, I wish I had that standard and expectation from the very beginning when I first dated. Like, but I didn't know what that looked like, right? Because, um, you know, I didn't have that example in my house. Like, I didn't have my my parents didn't really display their faith at all. They didn't. They didn't. They weren't very vulnerable with where they're at, and you know, I couldn't really say that they had you know, Christ at the center of their life, they never told me that that was something that I needed, it's something that I had to figure out, is like, well, I really want a guy who can lead, who can have Christ at the center of their life, who will will protect me, and, and, you know, will be, you know, will, will be able to cover our relationship, you know, so, really, oh, gosh, that covers so much, though, honestly, because because when you are with someone who has Christ at the center of their life, right, everything else kind of falls into place. You know, someone who has Christ at the center of their life, I would hope that they are they are searching and they're pursuing their purpose and the reason why they are set here on earth, right? Like that's why it's so important. Is like if you love God, if you know that you are put on earth with meaning you will likely pursue that purpose in which God has put you there on earth. Um, And it's usually, I I think, a Christ-centered purpose. So, when you search and and when your standard is Christ, when your standard is a love for God, most things will fall into place. You know, like, when it comes to... um, lots of things just like first of all like purpose ambition like that's already covered if you love god um purity covered if you love god in christ if you guys both have that same vision like those things and those are so important um in loving others you know should like getting a guy or a girl who loves others like that should come as a fruit of loving god you know if they if god is the number one in their life all those things should you should be able to see the fruits in their life from that so yeah man it feels weird to to cut this podcast kind of short but i'm having trouble figuring out what else to say because the moment i brought up jesus i was like wow that is kind of everything i have to say like don't like what what was the first point the first point was don't date to change um Y'all should be two individuals growing together um, and then pursuing someone who is Christ-centered um, and having that as a standard for your relationship um, or for any guy that you, guy or girl, who you pursue. Um, and then maybe a side note was also to like be very wary of guys within the age of 17 to 21 uh, if you're a fixer-upper. Um, but if you can you know, be alongside someone and, and be in their season of change, that's amazing too. Um, and being able to, for me, it's extremely hard. I just know that I, I become really toxic because I'm impatient and I, I am bad when it comes to taking the sidelines to wait for someone to, you know, change and pursue purpose. Like I am all about, I, <laughs> I am all about ambition and purpose-driven life and and I do not have the patience for others, um, which, you know, I need, but, um, yeah, that's all I got, uh, I think for today's topic. It is so weird doing short form, but I think I like it, um, love ya, and, uh, oh, I forgot to announce, but email me at, uh, goodnight, xcafe at gmail.com if you have any questions prayer requests anything like that 
sometimes I will, I sh no, sorry, sorry, X that out completely, love you guys, love you guys so much, uh, I will see you soon, and good night. He called you a cowboy, what did he mean, what are you? Just a humble bounty hunter, man.